Hello there, Scorpios. Um, I feel like the energy is, uh, it's still, you're still planning things. Things have not been, you know, clearly implemented into the real world just yet. Decisions are thought about and finalized, but they're not really, you know, kind of like, um, I want to say they're, they're not yet ready to be brought out into the world. Okay. So, which is good because you don't want to make major decisions during a Mercury retrograde cycle. And so let me just talk about some of the images that came out um, while I was shuffling the cards and then we'll go from there. You had a lot of messages that came through and there was an, um, a really long image that came out and it, it's kind of sad. So let me just talk a little bit about that, okay? So first of all, um, I, I when I shuffle this card, um, so I shuffled out these cards like three days ago and I left them kind of sitting on the table because I was trying to make sense of them, okay? And um, when I looked at these cards again, I feel like the images and the messages are definitely um, converging on a common theme. So let me talk about that. I, I feel like the theme of this month is turning back, turning your back on a situation or a person, okay? Because there's something new starting for you, okay? And um, the image that came out was, I saw this large body of water and it's frozen. So the top layer is frozen. And um, I, I feel like it's a, it's a lake it's a lake that's frozen over, okay? It's like winter, the snow is not falling, but the top of the, the lake is completely frozen. There's this man, he's walked a really, really long distance. He finally made it to the riverbank or the, uh, the bank of this lake. And um, he looks really worn out. He's wearing like sheepskin, he's, uh, he's cold, he's hungry. He looks just, disheveled like he, he just looks like completely decimated okay and uh, he's trying to um, he has like an ice pick he's trying to create a hole in the ice break through the ice so that he can you know fish like um, ice fishing so he can fish and get some some something to eat because he just looks really distraught the good news is I honestly don't feel like this man is you but let me just talk to you about the, the image first so he's like really clawing his way trying to break the ice okay and uh he, he keeps like trying to claw away at the ice and the ice what he didn't realize is that he's standing on the ice so obviously you know it's frozen solid because he's not breaking through it with his body weight so he's not falling in it and he's clawing away at the ice trying to chip away at it with this ice pick he's frustrated he's weak and tired and he's hungry and he tries to claw and claw and claw at it, but it just, it won't break open, okay? It just won't break open. And then I just hear him just kind of like crying, okay? I would not want anybody to be in this situation. It's like sheer desperation, exasperation, tired and frustrated and, and hungry. And it's just like you're, you're, you're feeling, you know, like defeat. Okay, like total utter defeat. So what I'm hearing is, I feel like you're the lake, okay? Not giving in, not giving slack, frozen over, meaning that, you know, you have turned very, very icy and cold towards a person or towards a situation in your life. Um, the other person might be trying to claw their way back in, might be, you know, trying to reach out, might be trying to communicate with you. And all they get is this just really thick, icy exterior that's not giving way, that's not reciprocating, that is not in any way helping this person. So I feel like you have somebody in your life that is, you know, in desperation, trying to claw their way back in, trying to reach out, trying to um, evoke some type of an emotional response from you, but like the, the icy, you know, um, surface it's not having any effect on you the the effort is futile and I, I just feel like you've definitely turned your back on a person for some of you this is a um, I feel like for some of you this is a family member if you've had like an estranged relationship with a family member especially like a parent I feel like this might be indicative of a parent 
where you've had to kind of like shut down your emotions in order to deal with this person, because you know Scorpios, you guys feel really, really strongly. You have a really deep emotions, and when it comes to people that you care about, people that you love, you know, you feel really, really strongly. And I'm sensing in a way that you know you, you might have helped this person a lot in the past. Okay, they might have drug habits. They might have.、Um, Issues with you know just getting their life in order. You've offered advice. You've offered assistance. You've offered so much of yourself to this person, and I feel like they continue to stray. They continue to not take your advice. They continue to make bad decisions. They continue to walk down the wrong path, and you're realizing that you can't enable the situation anymore. You can talk to your blue in the face. If they don't choose to listen, it's because you know they have to go through their own karma. They have to make their own mistakes. They have to learn from hitting rock bottom. Okay, so unfortunately, I feel like this is a situation where、uh, time and time again you've tried to help, you've tried to ease the situation for another person, but now you're standing strong, you're holding firm, and you're not able to give your energy to this person anymore. For others of you, this is definitely an X. Okay, this is definitely an X. I feel for some of you, it's somebody who,、um, you know, like I, I don't get that sense of vengeance. Okay, it, it's not like oh, you did this to me, and now I'm closing my doors to you. I, I don't get that. I, I just get that. You have distanced yourself. Like the emotions are no longer there. Like you're no longer in love with this person, and I feel like they're trying to claw their way back in. They're trying to reach out. They're trying to communicate. They're trying to、uh, revive, you know, whatever emotions or feelings that、um, you have shared in the past. They're trying in sheer desperation to 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 reconnect, to communicate, to explain themselves. Even for some of you, very small major、uh, minority. And then others, it's just like they're trying to reach out. They're trying to find a friendly face. They're trying to exact sympathy. They're trying to, you know, find warmth, find some support. And I feel like you're you're just indifferent at this point, and so you're not going to be giving your energy away. And so I definitely see a major, major eclipsing of somebody out of your life. Okay, and、um, the 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 card that really came out. Very strongly, and、um, I got the same card for Virgo, and the energy is very similar. So, if you're dealing with a Virgo, I feel like that might be the case. If you have Virgo strongly aspected in your chart, like your your Sun, your Moon, your Rising might be in Virgo, or you have a lot of planets in in that house of Virgo, its sixth house, or even you know a lot of placement in Virgo. I feel like this might、um, this reading might resonate with you. So the card that came out for Virgo that you also received was this really powerful card. Okay,、um, this has very strong Egyptian symbology, and when I saw this card, it was just really striking and it was really powerful. It indicates to me some sort of an eclipse. Okay, and I feel like it could be the the moon covering the sun or the earth, the shadow of the earth covering the sun. And the sun indicates a very strong masculine energy.、Um, it indicates the 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 self, the ego.、Um, and so I feel like for some of you, there is a major male figure that is eclipsed out of your life. Okay. So, and and I'm I'm seeing like you know like potentially a brother. You try to help, but you can no longer help. A father. You try to you know、uh, tell them what's. Like the the rightful path to walk towards, and you know, against their better judgment, they're not able to get there. So you've had to eclipse somebody out of your life, and for some of you,、um, a, a past relationship partner, somebody who might have been very ego driven. Okay, it's all about me. It was not about the relationship. It was just、um, they they were hanging on to this relationship with you mainly because you know it stroked their ego. It made them feel good. Whenever the world has dealt them a blow, they come running back to you, and so I feel like you are turning your back, literally turning your back, eclipsing some 
thing or somebody out of your life, okay? Mainly because you understand that you can no longer give yourself to this situation. And then I also feel uh, what's right underneath it is the Ace of Cups, okay? Once upon a time, there was great love involved in this relationship. And now you're in a position where you can no longer feed into this love. Some of you, the love has run out. And so you're, you're turning your back and you're kind of... Uh, they they can scratch they can pick at it and i feel like you're you're just not giving any more of your energy i feel for some of you this love is eclipsed because there is a new love that is as comparable the message i'm hearing here is uh once upon a time okay so i feel like there was the beginning whatever that situation is or whoever that person is in your life it was a very fairy tale puppy love um, like overly romanticized overly idealized type of a love where you thought in your naivety okay and in scorpios i say that very loosely because you guys are real very realistic but a lot of the times the emotions can take over and you know we're all guilty of this where we see things and we romanticize things and we um, imbue characteristics into a love situation that might not be there. So I feel like you might have been a little bit blinded by this love situation or it started in such a fairy tale romance that you thought it was going to be that way. And, and I feel like, you know, something happens. There was a wrench in the works. There were a lot of ego issues associated with this union where the other person was not ready for the relationship they're not ready for the responsibilities even if it's a family situation they're not ready for the responsibilities if it's a father if it's a mother for example they were all about themselves they weren't about um being a good parent if it's a love relationship partner they were all about me they weren't about the partnership so i feel like it was a, a rude awakening for you and it took many, many, many um, bouts of disappointment for you to get to this point. And then some of you, you have found somebody new, okay? Well, the Ace of Cups is about new love and I feel like for many of you, there is a new love that is just as amazing and fairy tale like But I feel like this new love is built on mutual goals mutual career paths mutual like expansion it's built on something very very solid we have here the the three of pentacles i see this as like um, communication that is all about self-improvement okay constructive uh, criticism um, giving like giving and receiving but also like learning learning how to be a better partner learning how to be a better friend learning about responsibilities learning about you know equal give and take so this is a card that is very um it's it's very oriented when it comes to like consultation asking other people for advice receiving feedback um, not being defensive when it comes to constructive criticism. So in this new love relationship, there's a lot of growth. There's a lot of room for expansion. There's also just, you know, a lot of admiration and a lot of like working together to build something of greater value. Whereas in the past, the situation has not always been positive. So now you're, you're, you're in something new. And we have here the Three of Wands, waiting for your ship to finally come in, um, letting go, you know, untying, okay, unraveling of this uh, ribbon here to get rid of baggage, to get rid of emotional baggage or like self-defeating talks, uh, things that we tell ourselves or just, you know, just uh, burdens from the past in order to free yourself for this new love that is in the picture for you. So. That message um, and the image came in very powerfully. So I feel like a lot of the times, and uh, this is why, and you know, a lot of people don't like Mercury retrograde. I don't like it. I have a lot of air and it affects my communication. It and I'm an Aquarius, so it also affects a lot of electronics around me. They malfunction like just left and right. So I don't really enjoy Mercury and retrograde cycles. However, the best insights that I've ever uh, come to terms with, the best um, like, you know, long-standing problems that I was not able to solve, the solutions come in during Mercury and retrograde cycles. And things that I thought I could put up with, um, they kind of 
implode and they they become very overwhelming and it's basically a signal for me to let things go and i feel like you're coming across very similar energies where you weren't really sure which way to go and this mercury retrograde cycle um pretty much solidifies your 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 decisions okay so for example there was a person right and you're just like can we stay friends can we um get back together can we be cordial with one another i feel like this mercury retrograde cycle uh you're going to start to feel somebody infringing upon your boundaries somebody overstepping their boundaries with you somebody telling you what to do somebody who's not respectful when you say no no means no and they're not really respectful of that so i feel like somebody who's trying really hard to push your buttons to get your attention to to you know try to revive something that they used to have with you and their efforts will become very obvious the way they go about it will not be pleasant and i see that you're going to start to realize that you know what this is their pattern this is like a a running theme with them you're going to be able to be very sen- you're you're going to be sensitive to the imbalance in in the relationship with them to the point where you will make up your mind not to tolerate it and eclipse this person from your life okay so i i definitely see a lot of unraveling okay no longer being bound to something and moving ahead to a new love situation a new environment where it's a lot healthier it's a lot more about communication it's a lot more about growth and expansion and and you know walking towards somebody that is a lot more compatible and a more like you but the bottom line is i feel some of you are able to leave the past behind because you have the support of a grand new love okay so the first six cards are pretty much reinforcing the energy of that image i'm seeing okay so here's the thing um i mentioned this with um taurus okay so taurus is a fellow fixed sign and this is um a, a common theme when it comes to fixed signs okay so taurus leo scorpio and aquarius okay being a fixed sign basically means that you know when we say we're going to do something even if we're sick even if we're on our deathbed we drag ourselves out of bed in order to finish that thing because we promised somebody we would would do it So there's a lot of um I I I feel like you know there it, it's like you're a man of your word you're a woman of your word when you say you're going to do something people will hold you to it they have a great deal of respect for you how trustworthy you are as well as how stable and dependable you are okay it's a very strong virtue of a fixed sign and then the 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 flip side of that Okay, the shadow side of being a fixed sign, especially for you guys, Scorpio, is that you hang on to situations for a little bit too long, okay? You have those pincers, okay? And then you grab onto a situation even when something is not good for you. Okay? Mainly because I feel for you guys, it's that emotional investment, the sunk cost, okay? I spent this much amount of time on this person. And I feel like a lot of the times, you know, your emotions take over when you're in love. You love desperately with, you know, your body, your heart, your soul. And it's really hard for you to hold back when it comes to somebody that you love. You would go to the ends of the earth for the other person, okay? That's how devoted you are. And I feel like there was a situation in the past where you gave so much of yourself there was nothing there was like barely anything left for you okay you ran yourself ragged for this person and then you realize that it it, it i feel like it um i feel like it took something away from you you know it was like one of those things where yes you can recover from it you you can step away start your life all over again but it did something to you it, it knocked that sense of naivety from you 
it um, taught you a lot about, you know, loving yourself first. It taught you a lot about, you know, setting healthy boundaries. And it taught you a lot about, you know, uh, really putting yourself first more than anything. Okay, so in this situation, I feel like there's a lot of fears. Okay, so, so like in this new love situation, everything is very stable. There's great communication. There's great passion, chemistry. But you don't want to play the fool. You're not going to rush into it, you know, with a blindfold on. You're still going to be very methodical. You're still going to give all of yourself to this relationship. And I feel like in the back of your mind, it's always like, you know, when is the other shoe going to drop? When are the temper tantrums or the selfishness from this person going to come in? But I feel like you're dealing, you are aware that you're dealing with a new person. You are aware that there's a lot of great communication here. You are aware that this situation is very reciprocal. But you're still perpetually, you know, skeptical about the connection. Um, so, so that's the first thing. I feel like you guys have really strong intuition. But when you're in love, you overlook a lot of things, okay? So I have here the magician, sleight of hand, okay? So the words that come out with this card here is like concealment, okay? Distraction, a red herring. Somebody creating a distraction to kind of like lead the audience or the viewers uh, to focus on something else that they want to show rather than something else that other people might um, might be curious about. So it's like sleight of hand, um, uh, the trick, okay? It's like the trickster. Not that you're dealing with somebody like this, but I feel like you are very, very skeptical and you are also trying to unearth. You are also trying to like figure out information. You're also trying to like, you're, you're basically trying to cover yourself so that you don't get hurt. So I do see, um, I do see a situation where you're potentially, you know, uh, you're curious about a lot of things. Um, I also feel like, you know, looking at somebody's social media, um, I'm also feeling like, um, wanting to, you know, wanting to access somebody's cell phone, wanting to access somebody's social media just to see what they're up to. Mainly because I, I, I feel like there isn't cause for concern, but I feel like you're curious, okay? And I feel like there was a past situation that left you feeling like I need to, you know, preemptively um, find out these things just to make sure they're not doing anything. Well, the problem with that is whenever we set out to confirm a negative so for example I want to make sure you know so just for an example okay I'm dating Bob I want to make sure that Bob is not cheating on me I'm going to go through his cell phone I'm going to go through his email I'm gonna go through his uh, you know Instagram account just to make sure that he's not talking to another girl and so I hack into his cell phone hack into his Instagram check all of his um, emails and then I find nothing okay so I'm trying to confirm a negative that he's not cheating on me. And so, you know, I find nothing. When I find nothing, I'm, I'm actually very happy. But then five and six months later, I'm gonna do it again because we won't stop until we find something positive, right? Like a positive, oh, he's sending this woman picture. He's sending an email to this other lady. And so I feel like you're, 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 very curious something is grabbing your attention and you're trying to confirm you're trying to confirm a negative and when we try to confirm a negative and we find that negative we never stop however if you have a hunch that oh so and so is cheating on me and you find that proof you're gone you know and you will never you will never need to dig into his phone to find to, to confirm it again because you've already found it. So I feel like there is a dicey situation here that you, some of you, might be embarking on, and I just want you to be a little bit careful. Um, if you 
feel like you don't trust somebody, trust your intuition. But you need to also understand, you know, exactly like why don't I trust this person? Piece together that entire narrative and that entire story before you jump the gun. Okay. Piece together the the entire history that you have with this person, and try to figure out have they ever lied in the past? If they've lied in the past, what's stopping them now? So that might be your answer. On the other hand, it's like have they ever lied to me? Have they ever done anything deceptive? Have they ever lied to other people? Have they ever cheated? If that history of you know lying and cheating has not been there, then you don't really have a enough to go by. So I feel like you know past history is very indicative of future, and so that might be where you need to look to figure out whether or not you can 100% invest in this person or invest in this situation because I feel like something, somebody from the past, really left their. Imprint on you. It's made you very doubtful. It's made you very skeptical. It's made you paranoid, and I also feel like it's made you um, scared to open yourself up. Okay, it's made you like、um, jaded when it comes to people, and so you're just trying to protect yourself. So I feel like you know if there are, are like hunches and things like that. It's not really stemming from something that is.、Um, it's, it's not coming from this relationship or this person. I feel like it's the fears and the insecurities that the the, the previous person has caused. Okay, that's triggering things in you. Okay.、Um, so that's the first six cards that I am sensing here.、Um, there is another message that came through. I wrote it down because.、Um, Like I, I've had this、um, spread laid out for the past few days, but I just could not get a coherent message. But now it's coming through. Okay, so what came through is、uh, this emperor, and、um, I'm hearing that Beatles song, you know, "I'm the Walrus." But I'm seeing、um, this person. Okay, this is a person who is、um, like a, a person in a position of authority. Okay, he's the emperor. He rules empires. He rules kings. He has a lot of wisdom. A lot of、um, he has wisdom. He has experience. He's just really, really good. He's somebody that everybody comes to for advice, for guidance, for、um, for answers. Okay, however. I was looking at this card, and then the the message that I'm hearing is the sun is setting on his reign. The sun is setting on this empire, meaning it's it's going away. The power, the prestige, the、um, the 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 heyday, the glory. I feel like it's fading. Okay. I feel like you're looking at a person, and you're dealing with a person. Who once upon a time was very very powerful, and you're seeing them for the very first time, and I I feel almost like they're trying so hard to like hold onto and grip onto that youth, what used to be memories of the past, and they're not able to let go, and I feel like they're stubbornly clinging onto it and not being able to you know. Um, accept that the times have changed. Accept that things are different now.、Um, I also feel like they're you're dealing with somebody who's very very resistant to change, but also specifically technological change. Okay, so like somebody who like is very、um, anti, you know,、um, computer, for for example. Okay. Um, they're they're not very technologically savvy. They refuse to learn. They even though it'll make their work so much easier, it'll make their life so much easier. They refuse to learn, and I feel like they're so deeply ingrained in in the past that they're refusing to do anything differently. So you're dealing with someone who is extremely stubborn. It's like my way or the highway. And you're trying to help. You're trying to ease the situation. And you, you, you know, you love this person. You care about this person. So you're just like, here's a better way to do it. But they will not listen. So you're, you're butting heads. I feel with someone who's very, very, very stubborn. And I feel like what would be really helpful 
what will be really helpful if you're ever frustrated um, is to kind of like look at this person like one of your parents, okay? What do you love about your parents, you know? They're definitely from a different generation. If you can sympathize with your parents, then you definitely can sympathize with this person. So I feel like it's somebody who's like struggling with the change, who, who's really struggling that their time is done. They're still really clinging on and they're not able to let go, okay? Um, I'm hearing like outdated ways of doing, outdated ways of thinking their way of life is changing and they're resisting they're they're like stomping the ground so if you're dealing with somebody who's like irritable um who's just like throwing tantrums who's just all around very difficult to deal with i feel like they're in the midst of some major major change that they're not comfortable with and they're just like crabby and cranky and, and things like that so give it some time let this person go through you know their phase and then they'll come back a, a much happier person okay so i feel like unfortunately all that you can do is you know um cheer them on from the sidelines be their support be their anchor if they 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 come around um but you're not going to be able to talk this person into accepting anything you're not going to be able to help this person okay um, they're, they're very stuck in their ways and they're just going to have to arrive and embrace these changes on their own in their own due time, which is not going to be this month, okay? Um, the other thing that did come out as well is um, I have here the Two of Wands and the Three of Pentacles and there was a message connecting these two cards, okay? So... When I was doing the reading for the other signs, the, the symbols that came out, well, not so much the symbol, the colors, okay? The green indicates to me like wealth and prosperity and finances, okay? And the pentacles, when it's linked up with the, this um, kind of like blue ribbon, violet blue ribbon, it indicates to me like um, connections, like um, communication and connection. So the way the cards are depicted, I'm getting different messages than I would normally would with a standard Rider weight deck. So with this Two of Wands, I feel like the Two of Wands is usually a very, um, it's like a very clear, cut, straightforward type of a decision. In the traditional right away deck is the man on the ivory tower. He's uh, holding a globe in one hand and a wand in the other. So it's more like, should I stay or should I go? Should I pick the status quo or should I embrace the change? So it's, it's between two choices and it's always status quo or change, okay? And um, there's definitely a major financial decision that you're you're contemplating okay it's major 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 and both decisions should i stay is financially motivated uh, should i go it's also financially motivated the ribbon is wrapped up and wrapped around both decisions so i feel like life is bringing you a major change a major change when it comes to your job a major change when it comes to your career, how you make money, the type of money that's going to be coming in, and you're grappling with these changes. So I feel like, in, in a sense, this emperor could be you. It's sort of like, yes, there was a heyday in this work that we're doing, but now the times have changed. Now we need to implement more technology in our work. Now we need to get with the times. Now we need to, you know, reinvent ourselves. We need to innovate. Otherwise, we're going to get um, bulldozed over by the competitors. So I feel like there's some major, major things, major decisions that you need to make as it relates to how you make money. Um, career change, okay. And then I also feel like this decision, you know, um, Scorpios, as a fixed sign, we are very decisive. We know exactly what we want and we know exactly what we don't want, okay? Our world as a fixed sign is very black and white, okay? There's always like yes or a no. We, we rarely, rarely straddle the fence. There's definitely a decision that you already know 
what you need to do, okay? But the challenge in this situation might be the Three of Pentacles here, consultation. Um, there might be a financial situation here where many people, many actors are involved and you don't want to rip the rug out from under somebody. Um, you feel like other people are dependent on you and so you can't make this decision in isolation. You feel like there are a lot of moving parts, not a lot, but in your mind, it's like, it's not just you, it's other people, maybe a partner, maybe a, a, a child, maybe a parent, maybe a business partner. There's just a lot of moving pieces. And I feel like somebody's trying to break away. Somebody's trying to break away, break free, you know, unravel or like free themselves from this bind, this ribbon. But the decision is not just about you, it involves other people. Um, for some of you, this could be like a partnership, like a marriage, an engagement, um, a family situation you're trying to move away from. And I feel like, you know, you have that sense of loyalty, that sense of fix, that, that fixed sign where it's like, we took a vow, I'm going to stick it out, okay? And so I feel like, you know, you're on the verge of, of uh, making some major decision and you know that it's, it's like a major life change where if you make this decision, something is going to get eclipsed, completely eclipsed and gone from your life. On the other hand, there's something new coming in to replace it. It is very scary and I feel like it's a major decision. It's not something that you can make you know, in isolation. You don't exist in a vacuum. You feel like a lot of other people are involved in this. But the bottom line is that it brings a lot more growth and prosperity. I'm following this Ace of Cups, okay? This pink ribbon here is linked up here with the Nine of Wands. And the Nine of Wands, it's almost like the springtime. A lot more buds and blossoms are coming in its place. If you make this decision, by the end of the spring, I'm sorry, by the end of the winter, when things start to thaw and the blossoms start shooting up, like, you know, February, March, standard springtime, or the beginning of spring, or the end of the frost, something new, a lot of new opportunities are going to be coming in for you. So if you make this decision to go, if you make this decision to kind of like take off on your own, <coughs> or to pursue a new course of action, you're going to have a lot more abundance, you know, as early as like the end of, um, the end of, um, the end of the, the, the winter time. So like March and April and things like that. Okay. So I, I'm sensing here some major, major change that you are embarking upon. And I definitely see resistance from your end. Okay. That might be why I was not able to do this reading like three days ago. But I feel like the opportunities are there and you are definitely aware of it, okay? I feel like you might have uh, a lot of people in your environment who are very status quo oriented and they're feeding you a lot of fears, naysayers. People who lack imagination, they're just like, no, you stay here. This is safe. This is something that we have always known. We have always done this in the past in the same way. You haven't been dealing with a lot of mavericks, trailblazers, people who think outside the box, or even the creative types, or in the, the inventors. And I feel like, you know, you're dealing with, you have dealt with these safe naysayers for a really long time. And, you know, you care about them. You have an emotional connection to them. Um, but now you're in a phase where you're dealing with a lot more like, um, people who think outside the box, more creative types. And so your worldview is changing. You're leaning towards more risk-taking, uh, eccentricities, I'm sensing, in a good way. And then also you're, you're leaning towards, you know, um, realizing your potential pretty much because, you know, it's safe over here, but it's very exciting over there. It's not just the excitement, it's just these are trailblazers. These are people who know exactly what they're doing. These are people who think outside the box, they break out of the norms, they take risks, and they have major, major, major rewards, okay? And so, 
you're looking at your former self. The resistance to change, stick in the mud, is also what I'm feeling. And you're just like the sun is setting on this empire, this way of doing, this way of life. I need to recognize that. Okay, the high priestess is a self-knowing. Okay, it's the intuition. Um, I'm literally hearing, you know, animals like uh, they're the first responders in a natural disasters, right? So, like, if there is a a lot of rain coming, even before the rain drops, even before the rainfall, you start to see animals scurrying back into their shelter. You start to see ants and insects、um, finding their way to higher elevation. It's because they're very in tune with the universe and they live so close to the ground. They're aware of all the rumblings in the ground. Okay, so I'm feeling like this cat. It's um, he, he's got he or she has a little crescent moon here. Okay, so this is somebody who's very sensitive to spiritual energy, to changes, to currents, to electromagnetic currents. It's somebody who is definitely aware that change is coming, and they're trying to figure out. You know, I need to run for shelter, or I need to do something different, or I need to implement these changes. And I feel like Scorpio. This is not a big. I, I'm sorry. This is not a small decision. It's not about like you know what am I going to eat the next day? Where am I going to go this weekend? This is major, major life-changing decisions that you need to make, and you've been dealing with, you know, the the people who take the safe route, and you've been dealing with like, you know, people who 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 stand in their place. They don't really move anywhere. They're they're not the movers and the shakers. They just, you know, they're very status quo oriented. And then you are meeting a lot of mavericks, a lot of trailblazers, a lot of successful people, and the the main thing that you're noticing is that these people over here they take risks. Okay, and so this is really exciting and thrilling for you. And so you want to emulate this success, and you're trying to you know get yourself from here to here. And I feel that it's bringing up a lot of anxiety. It's making you very nervous. So you're making some major big decisions. And November, don't make a decision, okay? Because we are in that Mercury retrograde period, where these things are really fun and exciting to think about. But don't jump the gun. I see that you're very scared, but you don't need to make this decision right now, okay? Um, and I feel like you know you already know what you want to do. I, I've I've already I'm already picking up that you know your soul already wants something, and you're gonna go towards it. And I see that you're moving towards this risk taking. And I want to say that it's gonna pan out really well. Okay, three of cups, celebratory energy. Okay, so we're starting here with ace of cups. To the three of cups, union, having somebody by your side, but also this is a card about you know expanding your social circle, being around like like-minded people, being around people who inspire you, being around people who are on your same level, who are on the same page, who get you. Okay, so this is like finding that community of people where you can let your defenses down, where you can let you know the communication. The the energy just start to grow. So I feel like you're in a very good position, and you already have made up your mind. You're going to move in this direction, and I just feel like it's just a matter of when. But right now, you're trying to come to terms with the fact that I have to close some doors. I have to eclipse some people out of my life in order to before I can move ahead with this change. So take all the time that you need. I would say. Start doing it in、uh, December. Okay, take all the time that you need in November to mull it over to make sure that you are totally clear with this decision. I do not recommend、um, letting people from the past come back in. Okay, if you must experience it one more time, please do. But what you will start to see is they're not on on your wavelength anymore. You have outgrown that that situation. Okay. You're gonna start to see that, all right? I'm gonna leave it at that.、Um, 
Scorpios, and uh, I will be back for the December reading, okay? Happy birthday, take care of yourself, and I'll talk to you soon.